What's going on, guys? I'm here with Devin, and before we get started, we got to do a makeup check. All right, all right, all right, makeup check. Okay, okay. Wait, let me get a wet wipe. You got it? Yeah. What's going on, guys? I'm here with Devin, but before we get started, I got to do a makeup check for you clowns. Yep, so. yep, got to get the makeup check in. Yep. No bronzer. All right. Looking sharp. All right. <laughs> so, Devin has been commenting on my YouTube videos for two months. He's been a very open minded vegan for two months. And then, out of the blue, a week ago, he said, I'm going ve I I'm not vegan anymore. I'm trying meat. And I was like, oh my God, I got to get this guy on my channel. Because. I feel like I was one of the main reasons that he kind of he kind of switched over in general. So I'm going to kind of let him take it away and kind of start off with kind of the positive message he wanted to portray as well as kind of how I tied into the questioning of his beliefs. Right, right. So, I mean, the thing is, is, of course, your videos have definitely been influential for me. But at the same time, they've been a point of contention for me within myself. I think for vegans, a lot of the times we hear information and it's really hard to accept that because it contradicts what we believe. So um, me in my past, I've been vegan for seven years. I spent a lot of time on the internet, keyboard warrioring. I've been, uh, you know, t-shirt activism. I have probably made, I don't even know how many people go vegan just based off of wearing my vegan t-shirt at the gym because I have a pretty decent appearance. And so now I'm kind of, I'm at this crossroad where I realized that, hey, you know, I, unintentionally was leading people down a road that they may not know how to handle themselves. Um, now, I don't want to sit here and talk crap about vegan, so I do understand why somebody would go vegan, uh, but it, now it's at a point for me where I realize that my health is has always been my primary reason for my dietary choices. Uh, even becoming vegan for me, really when I first started, I was mind blown of the idea of even being able to eat just solely plants. And so I transitioned into that lifestyle to alleviate myself from the typical nonsense that we all suffer from food corporations, industry, and ultimately for me, it was an eating disorder. Uh, so when I found the plant-based diet, it was really like a life-saving turn of events for me. Now, however, in the long run, I will say that I appreciate what I did learn, but in some sense, something that is healthy at one point may not be healthful for the rest of my life. But this right? was this was over seven years ago. Right, right. So seven years, seven years. I never did cheats. I never did any of that. And I ate a, a quite a healthy diet. I mean, the thing that I did like about your videos, but I also hated about your videos, was that it criticized my diet and it made me go, "Well, where am I getting that that nutrient from?" And so, I, really, in my last days of plant based, I started really creating a variety that I had never tried before. Uh, so even in that aspect, any vegans watching, if you go through Frank's videos, you can see some of his criticisms and check your nutrients. Go, hey, you know what? Where am I getting iodine from? Where am I getting zinc from? Where am I getting et cetera from? So I think that even within that benefit, it triggered me to a point that I went, you know, I need to self-analyze. And I realized after really ultimately after changing my diet, that some things were not quite right. Uh, and I didn't understand it at first because I almost became normalized to the way that I started feeling. Um, Before I, we go into uh, into you transitioning from vegan to uh, eating meat again, uh, how did going vegan and that seven years of vegan kind of change your life from having the eating disorder of bulimia? Um, so one of the biggest things for me was the entire mindset of giving yourself good things, right? Rather than just being in the mind frame of trying to deny yourself the bad, you know, give yourself the good and then it'll slowly push out the bad. And so ultimately, I think it's very common for people who are bulimic that processed food will get you, you know, the addict addictive nature of those foods. And so when I took a hold of this idea of, you know, consuming live foods, you know, and taking that life into myself, and just being able to get that breath of fresh air to finally go, okay, you know, these industries are creating these products to keep me trapped. However, I can escape this fate by changing my dietary choices. Um, that was a, a big stepping stone for me. My uh, compulsive eating, 
eating fruit and vegetables was my biggest way to help me get used to even having food in my stomach again. Because people who are bulimic know that even that feeling alone is depressing. You really have to rewire your entire brain, your mindset um, of not indulging on if you eat one Dorito chip, well, there you go, you screwed it up. You need to eat the whole bag, you know. So my my mind went from a very corrupt, very um, I would say self de de uh, depriving mindset to something that I found that I felt was more beautiful in just the plants, the nature, and the way that it made me feel. So you were happier and more comfortable stuffing yourself full of plant foods. You know, you didn't feel like you were doing anything bad almost. Um, I'm, I've always been on, like anyone else, we all know, right? Plant food's healthy. Eat your fruits and vegetables, et cetera, et cetera. So if I'm going to feel like crap, right, trying to get used to this, this feeling of being full, the plants were my option and it helped me. But you literally did this diet for seven years. Right. Now, um, was there so, any sort of like progression over the seven years? Did your thoughts change or like do you want to take us through that? Um, so I did progress. So even just be before I ever became vegan, I started vegetarian and I started learning more along the lines. I started off way back in the era of the, the durian rider, the uh, 30 bananas a day. I mean, it's to the point where I went back to an old website, uh, whatever the website was. And I was looking at some of my comments on there. And I'm like, what was I What was I eating back then? Uh, or, you know, you go through some of the forums and you recall, uh, like, exactly what was that? But over time, I started finding more uh, technique to it, I guess, more juicing. That was a big thing. Um, so I think there are different subsections or levels of veganism, I guess, in terms of the diet that I could say that got me to more nutritious foods within the plant-based um, diet. Have you tried, like, did you ever go completely raw for a period of time, or have you mostly incorporated both raw and cooked vegan foods for a period of time? So a good experience with it, or a funny funny story with that. I Raw vegan is always considered to be, like, the optimal, the epitome of, you know, discipline and health, right? So I've always struggled to get there, and the time that I did do all raw was not a good experience. And neither for me or my wife. And so in that time frame, um, she actually lost her period, which was ironic because I had seen that before. That, hey, you know, there's women who lose their periods when they just eat all raw plants. And what's unfortunate is people brag about it and they're happy about it. Not all, not everybody. That's but there crazy. Are like that. Yeah. And it's not normal. But if some of these things become normalized, then people are more accepting to go, okay, well, you know. Eh, it's happening to everybody, but it's a warning sign to me, you know, and so even now at this point where I've eaten the healthiest vegan diet that I could possibly eat, I'm having warning signs. How long did and you go on raw vegan for? I tried that for about a month of just strictly no processed food and um, yeah, about a month. One thing that's very common with raw vegan people is that they think a raw vegan diet is going to heal themselves and every single time they just can't stick to it they mm -hmm. go raw vegan they don't last they have to go back to cooked foods happens mm -hmm. with every single vegan they think going raw is going to fix their stomach fix their health and in some cases it's a temporary remedy but then they have to go back to the other foods because their body is just not getting enough calories let alone nutrients and this ties into raw primal a little bit because as with humans, the need for cooked food and higher caloric foods uh, takes a precedent in a lot of cases. Most people that go raw primal with just meat and fat, generally speaking, they will at some point either go into cooked foods or they will start consuming carbohydrates like dairy, milk, and fruit. There, To my understanding, I have not heard of any raw primal people on a raw meat diet that stick to just raw meat and animal fat. I mean. Maybe Derek Nance does, but I know he salts his food. I know that uh, he does a couple things that most raw primal guys advocate against, but not to detract from that too much. Uh, so you try, you've tried raw vegan. You've tried cooked vegan. Uh, you know, your wife even lost her period. So was there anything else worth noting kind of in that seven-year period? I would say that something worth noting within the idea of raw vegan, right, it's – such a discipline thing but it's ignoring something very intuitive that your body is screaming out to you about it's very hard to stay raw vegan 
because you are not getting all the nutrients that you should be getting. And it's not because you're weak. It's not because you aren't trying hard enough. It's because it is hard to be malnourished for a long period of time, right? And so rather than me necessarily even hear, you know, paying attention to that, it was something where I almost thought, okay, well, maybe I'm just not trying hard enough. And I think that's where some people get trapped into trying it again and again and again and depleting their nutrients, you know, so, so on and so forth. I think I've mentioned that in a couple of my videos where it's never the vegan diet's fault. It's never the diet. It's always yeah, the person. Yeah. They always blame right. the person. They never think that something could be wrong with the diet when it's staring them in the face. Right, so, right. You know, we kind of touched on your vegan past a little bit. Uh, you did bring up the 30 banana a day thing, but that wasn't too unrealistic for you, was it? Oh, no, not at all. I mean, it was to the point that I made a t-shirt that I had uh, 10 bananas a day. And people would compliment her all the time. They'll go, oh, do you really eat 10 bananas a day? And to me, it was normal. I say, yeah. I, just, I mean, like for, for breakfast, for breakfast, just for breakfast alone. I wonder if a normal person could eat 10 bananas in the morning or it would take a few like weeks to months of adapting to the, the vegan diet. I want, that, that makes me curious. I feel like you'd be sick after one or two, you know? Yeah, I mean, like like anybody else, I I always throw them in blenders, you know. Oh, that's just, right, you mentioned that. that. Yeah. Right, right, and and I I mean, and to me, I I thought it was healthy. It made sense, especially I would add greens, right? And I'd add about uh, three hundred grams of spinach with that, and I would down about two and a half mason jars almost in one sitting, <laughs> every morning, every morning, and I and I th thought it was great. But this, this, what was in this smoothie, man? Because this is one of my pet peeves: is people who make delicious fruit okay. smoothies and then they put spinach in it. If you guys do that, I'm gonna be in your closet at night. I'm gonna be like the boogeyman. I swear. I, I, what did you? So just tell, tell me what you put in that shake. I'm curious. Bananas, spinach. Yeah, no, that's it. Banana, spinach, and water. Because and did it taste good? I can honestly say I like the taste of it. But it would have been better without the spinach. <laughs> yeah, maybe it would have been better you could have had a nice spinach salad after but you didn't that, 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 that's what bugs me man that's have your spinach salad for lunch dude you don't have to have it for breakfast that's what bothers me that's my yeah. <laughs> okay all right yeah no 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 i get what you're saying i get what you're saying um I, I think taste is one thing and when you think you're trying to do something healthful is another thing you can you can disregard certain tastes and you're like eh, i, I need to get my spinach in i'm gonna throw it in with the bananas so i can just kind of taste you know wash the taste out and go with it you know there was a period of time when i was on uh when I, back when i was bodybuilding there was a point where i was on what i thought was a really clean bodybuilding diet and i would have those big shakes too i would take like apples bananas um i think i took some vegetables some lemon juice uh blended it all together in these big shakes and i thought it was being so healthy with all the fruits and vegetables i was uh -huh. i went down that road too once i keep i forgot to mention that um until my blend blender broke at least Right, yeah, and it's it's weird because you have to consume such a high amount of volume with a plant-based diet, right? But there's water in it, and then there's fiber in it. And so things like blenders, and that's the reason why people end up consuming these mass amount of foods, because you have to get that many calories, and it's very hard to sit there and chew. So people blend it up, drink it, and then call it good. And, there's, so, and, yeah. and one of the points you mentioned later, although we don't really want to go into it too much, is meat eaters poop stinks, but vegans doesn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, Right. When you're, they're not, they're eating so much food, such a high volume of food, they're not even digesting it. Right, right, right. And I mean, I don't know if you want me to go into that now, but um, it is a reality. Uh, I've even said that, and people go, "Oh, so wow, vegans literally think their shit doesn't stink," you know? And I'm like, "No, I'm serious." But when I look back at it, again, I normalized it at the time. It was at a point where I'd eat so much fruit, where watermelon, for instance, I would flush a toilet bowl full of watermelon because I would just poop out the food right or i would just poop out literally the um the the oatmeal and it's a, a point where not always but a, enough times to where it is alarming even chunks of apples chunks of hemp seed or you know a piece of hemp seed and you go wow I'm, I'm eating clean i'm eating so clean that i'm not even pooping poop anymore i'm pooping food yeah i mean guys fruit is so refreshing fruit juice is so delicious but humans doesn't work too well in our digestive systems in a lot of cases. Uh, but one, you know, even in ruminant animals, cow shit stinks. You know, there's a reason you say, well, it smells like someone killed a dog in here. You know, it smells like a barnyard. Like, it's not a good smell. Even ruminant animals, their poop doesn't smell good. So why should humans on a vegan diet 
and you're saying your poop smells good? Like your shit doesn't stink? That doesn't make sense from any animal's perspective. I mean, it's one thing if, you know, your poop, this is a really silly topic to be sciencey about, but right. your poop is supposed to smell like a rotten version of what you ate. You know, you should be able to smell some of what you ate in it but if you're just pooping out sweet potatoes as whole sweet potatoes then you know what's the point so uh i think we spoke on that plenty but i guess uh we could kind of so we could kind of segue into uh your experience with the raw meat diet but since um th and then we could because that's going to be a shorter discussion i guess than veganism as a whole right so yeah. let's kind of talk about and, and it's only been literally a week for you so uh, i guess kind of walk us through that that moment of realization and that moment you decided okay like was it a video that was it my video that triggered it was it an accumulation that triggered it what was that moment that you know it's like a you're, you just snapped almost right so it's hard and i mean if there's anybody who's vegan right now who's watching this i can understand how difficult it is because you are caught between two paradigms and you almost lose like who am i you know, what am I doing? What am I trying to be right now? Um, and that transition actually took me this, maybe it took me almost a month, two months of just really thinking about it, you know, and it's not easy for people, you know, and when people make like anti-vegan videos or whatever, it makes it harder for the audience member as a vegan sometimes to appreciate the information because you feel attacked. And so just as humans, sometimes we shell up, right, when we when we feel attacked. But I'm like, okay, how do I break how, – how do I think outside of myself? Because there's something that's not quite right about the way I'm feeling. Um, and it was at the point where I remember sitting – probably a day or two sitting in the shower with my wife. And I'm like, you know, I feel kind of bad. You know, I'm trying to understand myself, but – I feel like I need to do this. I'm not doing it for pleasure. I'm not doing it because I want to eat barbecue, cookouts, and McDonald's. I'm doing it because I really want to be healthy. You know, I want to feel good again. Um, and so trying to negotiate with myself and even understand through the logical steps of, you know, the debates that I've listened to and just what I've, what I've known to be true for the seven years or so. Now, once I came across your videos, it was helpful as much as much as it was painful right they say sometimes medicine is you know the, the pain that brings it alive um hearing and allowing myself and being open to hearing something that i didn't agree with um was was definitely my best my best um advantage in this and being able to critique myself and not just stay inside my information bubble so um not only just your videos but there's a few other people as well and just reading through the comments something that stuck to me was when somebody said, um, you know, there's essential fats, there's essential uh, amino acids, right? Essential, essential proteins, but when it comes to carbs, there's not necessarily like an, an essential carb, right? And so some ideas like that, and just thinking like, you know, some of these, you know, it's, it's resonating with me uh, in, in different ways, but overall, when it comes down to it, um, it was the health that I'm, that I'm seeking. You know, and what was in the way of me trying to become healthier were the the ethical ideas that I had, where I would put myself on the back burner, put my own put my own existence on the back burner to um, save animals, so to speak. So you mentioned that the carbohydrate thing, which is a very logical thing that comes up a lot, was one of the reasons that. That, that flicked a switch in your head, but did you ever come across things like you don't have access to these foods at all times of the year in certain climates? Did you ever think about like modern versions of fruits and vegetables are much more calorically dense and it's unnatural? I mean, did you ever consider the things like the vegans needing supplements in their diet? How did those compare to that carbohydrate thing? Did those mm. come up as well? Right. So I thought of, a, okay, well, you actually made a really good video one day. And it's funny because I had just seen that video the day before, uh, a video to one that you responded to the day before. And I posted another guy's video. Oh, oh man, you created a good, the person created like a, an outline of, okay, I'm eating this vegan item and these are the nutrients, right? And I'm like, oh, this is just what I need. I need this so I can make sure that I'm getting these. So it has the paper value, right? The idea Chronometer of warriors. Right, right. And I mean, that's almost, you know, if chronometer says it, it's right, you know, of course. And so when I saw your video on that and the idea of an anti-nutrient, 
Did not. I never heard of that. I didn't. I heard of it in the aspect of seeds, but not in the aspect of uh, as many. Sorry to interrupt you, but I believe that was the video critiquing Simnet Nutrition, right? Where he was putting right. all the stuff yep. in the chronometer. Yep. And I had just subscribed to him the day before I saw your video. <laughs> and then once I'll I saw I'll link that video, video for you guys in the description. Yeah, and, and then I saw your video the next day, and I'm like, well, it's, you know, it's good to see the other side of it because I was at that point where, and truthfully, I think once somebody's watching your videos, then at that point they have enough intellectual curiosity to go, you know, I'm already thinking about it, and I'm thinking about how can these foods benefit my life? You know, maybe plant-based doesn't totally make sense for me to do for the rest of my life, right? Um, so if someone's watching here, well, you're on the right path, right? You're, you're at least open the door for yourself to, to something that will be beneficial to you. So that gave us a, an, you know, an excellent idea of why you've kind of transitioned. And it you know, really was an accumulation of all of these things, uh, from the nutrients to the vitamins. It really <laughs> took hammering, really hammering the point home for you to really make the switch. You, know, you saw a lot of things that might have just at face value should have been enough. But, uh, you know, I think, I think for people, uh, it's just so difficult. Even with the video I made today, it's, it's just so apparent how certain things are so ingrained in our cultural wisdom mm -hmm. that you just can't. And even with my parents and everyone has family members that are like that. And it's just unfortunate that some people aren't as open-minded as you. So let's kind of talk about, I guess, so now you've, let's literally talk about the whole, like, it's only been a week, so... Mm -hmm. I'm sure we could sum up everything. Like, what was that first meal like? What was that first day like? Right. So I actually posted a video about that. Um, but just before, I guess, transitioning into eating meat again, I sat back and I thought about some things. And now, I mean, there's tons of variables for why things happen. But some of my biggest concerns was, one, my dental health. Because getting cavities from, really, it's not, it shouldn't be happening in the way that it happens, you know? Uh, my wife has never had a cavity in her whole entire life. She grew up in Sweden. Um, they ate animal products her whole life. Uh, she met me. She went vegan, and then she gets a cavity. And awesome. so I go. Did you get cavities too, or? Oh yeah, I have cavities. Yes. Mm -hmm. I mean, and th that's not to say that, especially with the bulimia, that definitely gives you cavities from prior. But I mean, within my time of being vegan, um, I am sometimes. It's a shame because some people think that veganism is a cure-all, uh, that a plant-based diet is a cure-all, and that you can't become sick. You can't you can't have cavities. It's fruit. Fruit's different than you know processed sugar, right? But it's not. It, it for me, it has given me cavities. For my wife, it's given her cavities. Um, for my health now, moving into like where I started consuming meat again, um, the first time that I did it. And, and I'm sorry, before you go into that, I think one yeah. thing worth mentioning is, you know, guys, fruits and vegetables never really led to the degeneration of our culture. It was mostly grains and then the lack of fat soluble vitamins. So it's not to say that you can't, you know, it's not to say that fruits are going to give you cavities or vegetables are going to make your teeth rot. A more accurate statement would be not getting enough vitamin K2 <clears throat> or vitamin D3 from the sun or vitamin A in the form of retinol. Those things are what's going to cause you to get cavities, not necessarily negative foods you're eating. Because there are plenty of indigenous groups that ate even grains. The present thing in their diet was the fat-soluble vitamins that had like a preventative effect on the cavity. So uh, as you were saying, uh, you were going into the meat diet? Yeah, yeah. I think that's fair to say for sure. Um, and so transitioning to meat, of course, I had like the, just the roadblock of even trying to eat it to the point that um, I went to Sweden a couple months ago. And my wife made vegan Swedish meatballs, right? And they were red on the inside because they were beet juice. And I couldn't eat it. And I know it's not, meat, it's not meat product, but it almost made me sad to think of even eating that, right? So transitioning from that depth of my mindset, right? And that was just a few months ago. Yeah, just, just a few months ago. Uh, now transitioning to trying to eat raw meat, I mean, if that can try to show the, the depth or the – how important it was for me to think, okay, I need to eat something that's more healthier because something's lacking, something's not right. Um, now, trying raw meat to me made more sense than trying cooked meat. Again, I was fascinated that people could even eat raw meat because my whole life I've said things like, oh man, uh, you wouldn't be enjoying meat if it wasn't for plants. So therefore, humans are vegan, you know, you know, obvious, right? However, 
um, that's not true, you know, or you wouldn't be eating meat without cooking it. Well, of course, that's not true. So uh, it was very odd. I actually posted a video on it my first time ever eating meat. Uh, and you can see my reaction in it and just kind of that gagginess, but it wasn't too bad. You know, I, I had gotten my mind used to this idea, um, which had to, I had to like prep myself for it. And, and guys, uh, he's not eating bacon and eggs. This guy is not eating a, a perfectly seared New York City steak. This guy's taking a bite out of raw meat. You know, this is way drastic than most vegans do this. And, and I, and I think that was a part of my, my, my rationalization too, because I'm not doing it for uh for pleasure i'm doing it purely for health right so if someone's saying oh you're just doing it for needless pleasure no i'm not i'm doing it because i want to be a, health, a healthy person right so i think my first one was a sirloin and as you could imagine i sniffed it i did the, the looked at it sniffed it it's like eh, eh, and i took a couple bites and this is the part that's phenomenal to me what was it i'm it's sorry that, but what was it like buying that in the supermarket like i felt kind of so actually, prior to buying it, I went to a, a market and just looked at stuff one day and then walked away because <laughs> I was like, look at this stuff. <laughs> I, I went and bought, I've never gone to the meat market, the meat side of the grocery store for years, for years. So I looked now when I was going to purchase it, I asked her, um, which one of these can you eat raw? <laughs> and, she's, and she's like, and she's like uh, I guess these ones over here, you know, because it was like the sirloin. Um, so I, I bought the sirloin and I was like, okay, well. Here we go. We're about to we're about to get down. We're about to try it. You know, we're breaking it. Uh, and so yeah, my wife was there, and she just I cut her a piece so she could cook it because she's been vegan too. Um, and now the part that I that was surprising to me is the first time I tried it, it did not taste the same as the next 15 minutes later. There is a taste, and once you can understand what the flavor is, then you can really grasp like this appreciation for it. Uh, and it, not only just in the skeletal muscle but when i tried raw heart as well right and so what, i'm sorry what did you mean 15 minutes later yeah just within tossing it around in my mouth it tastes it tastes completely different and then the next morning i woke up and i had it for breakfast right i didn't i had another piece of it pretty much what i had left and at that point i liked it i went i and it's funny because when I watched the video, I remember saying, you know, I don't think I can do this. It doesn't, I don't, I don't quite like this, the flavor. But at this point, I genuinely enjoy the flavor. Um, I've been spending the last week trying to describe what raw meat tastes like and why it tastes better than cooked meat. Yeah, you know, the raw, the raw versus cooked thing, the taste is interesting because if you perfectly sear a piece of meat over a wood fire and put some salt on it, it tastes better than raw. Like I think that's pretty. The but if you just sear it like most people do in a pan, it really doesn't taste better than raw meat. Uh, one one interesting thing was most indigenous groups, they always prepared their meat over a fire, or they boiled it. So definitely way different cooking methods than we do now. And I agree a hundred percent. You know, a pan sear tastes worse than raw, and most people pan sear their meat. Mm, you know, it's yeah, a pretty unnatural thing, uh, and that's what you're doing. You're did. trying to pan sear it. Yep, yep, we did that. So I, I honestly think if we took, like, if you took raw fish, and uh -huh. then you took boiled fish, like the Inuit ate it, you would probably like the boiled fish. If you took, mm. uh, if you took raw beef and then you put it over a perfect wood fire, charcoal, salt and pepper, I'm sure you'd like it. But it's it's interesting to note that you know traditional cooking methods taste good, but the pan sear, I really don't think it tastes better than raw myself either. Right, right, and I mean, I, the only raw that I've tried so far uh, is beef, cows, cow meat. So I mean, uh, I've tried salmon, but that's smoked. Have you tried? Uh, so you tried heart. Have you tried any other organ meat so far? I've tried liver. I've tried liver, and I'm not quite. I haven't quite understood that taste yet. Um, I accidentally left some out too long on the counter, so I just kind of exed it. Um, but it's almost like broccoli would be in a weird way. I know that's kind of hard to to compare but there's a somethingness to it that's like reminds me of broccoli where i can accept it i just need to give it the time um and the potency i guess so over the past week you've pretty much been eating raw meat every day has that been kind yes. of like your sole source of nutrition for the most part <laughs> Yes, uh, actually, I have like two hearts in the um, fridge right now. I just chop it up, 
put them in mason jars, you know, take the best of both worlds. Vegans love mason jars. Um, mm-hmm. And then I just I go to work and it's I just fill up a bucket of ice, my lunch pail, put my um, put my heart in there and eat it at work. And then I usually cut like a piece of sirloin or whatever other type of meat too. So that's interesting because most people, when they transition to this diet, you know, a lot of times people say they need to eat more fat initially, and I think that's very important for adapting to a ketogenic metabolism, but you seem to be, you know, not really having any sort of issues whatsoever. If anything, you'd say you felt better? Yeah, actually, I thought that was really funny because I've watched people's videos on keto before, and they talk about their energy depletion or whatever before they get used to it. And I don't, I didn't have that experience. Um, I was surprised because I like doing cardio and boxing and whatnot. And my um, exercise didn't suffer from it because I'm so used to doing uh, high carb. I've always been high carb. I'm to like thousands of calories of carbs. Um, but just eating the protein and fat, and I have n- not had much, not, not much fruit sugar whatsoever, maybe an apple. Um, and... I so I feel great, and so I, I'm surprised myself. Guys, this is the magic of raw meat. Raw meat literally has almost double the amount of B vitamins, and 10 to 20 percent more of the other vitamins. It digests much more efficiently. Mm-hmm. Your body can extract much more nutrition from it. I would assume if most people went on a raw meat diet initially when transitioning into keto, zero carb, whatever it would be like this where we wouldn't have nearly as many problems. Uh, I think transitioning to a cooked meat diet, it's much, much more difficult. And then questions come up. You know, although I sear my meat on the outside and I add salt to it, is, you know, what's the difference between, you know, the meat's technically completely raw on the inside, you know, 90% plus of the meat is raw. But, you know, are there physiological differences because you're tricking your body that it's cooked and salted? Uh, You know, that's where it gets really interesting. But, uh, it, that's definitely you know something to note about the increased energy extraction and you know less water required to digest and just overall higher vitamin content of uh, of these raw foods and of course you know I think one thing that's really important to tie in that you mentioned in regards to the vegan thing is you know there's no seasoning you're not cooking it it's not mm-hmm. a pleasure it's mm-hmm. a very interesting. Uh, aspect, whereas most people, I'm sure they would have been diving into bacon already or cheese or foods that most people consider much more enjoyable. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. And and I I think that what I really appreciate about this too, is that it doesn't, it doesn't stimulate me. Like the meat is so pure. It's not a hyper stimulant where like fruit, it gets you kind of amped up or some things are too flavorful for me. And I like how subtle it is, and it's so real. And I have to appre- like, I have to appreciate it because even when I finish eating, I'm not in the slumps. It doesn't give me a drag down on the end. I don't have a sugar high, and then a and then a you know a depletion of my energy level. It's just, it is very constant. Yeah, I think a great analogy is, you know, if you eat a steak. You might not feel amped up in energy, and you still feel comfortable enough to run. You could like you feel like you could run a mile probably, but when you eat fruit, you feel like you got to get up and run through some drywall. Like yeah, yeah, you're really pumped. Like you're ready to, you know, you're ready to do it. You know, that's that's the power of uh, you know the sugar really, especially yeah, so, certain gut bacteria. And I think I mean on the topic of health too, where meat has definitely put me at a point where I'm like, you know, I'm going to keep eating this right is where I started seeing the reversal of some of the experiences I was having on a plant-based diet. Um, there's three primary ones that I can think of. I don't know if people are totally going to relate to the first one that I'm going to say, but my saliva acidity, I don't know why, but it was so intense that to the point where I would wake up and it's like my mouth was it was sour, you know? And so I, I t- okay, I'm like, okay, I'm going to do the coconut um, oil pulling thing, try to just alkalinize my mouth um now i haven't had that same problem and i don't know why i can't tell you why i haven't changed my diet my um dental practices my dental hygiene practices but the the acidity of my saliva has it feels much less harsh harsh on my teeth um than than before and i can't i can't tell you why but um i have a feeling that it's it correlates with my point of changing my diet yeah, I'm looking at this study right now. Oral implications of the vegan diet observational study. 
The study revealed greater incidence of demineralization and white spots in the vegan subjects compared to the omnivorous ones localized at the neck of the teeth and on the vestibular surfaces of dental elements. The saliva pH, more acid in omnivorous patients, ranged between 4 and 6. So the pH was definitely lower in the vegan. That's something really interesting that I don't know how. Uh, I've never heard of that before, and uh, apparently it's popular enough that they did a ton of studies on it. Uh, yeah, I'm glad you even brought that up because I, I didn't even know that. I can, yeah, I, it's interesting what one quick Google search will do on NCBI. I'll link those for the, in the description too. Uh, what was the so that was your main reason? What were the the other two? So um, my other one really, I think the most important one. Well, the one that's really common is gassiness. It was at a point with plant based that I had gone to the grocery store and I released some gas out of me that. I, this lady was walking in my direction, and I'm thinking, like, oh, my gosh, please don't walk over here. Okay, how do I escape this? I need an escape plan right now because it was, like, some stuff. And, I mean, I'm talking, like, anyways, it was bad. Um, the what funny thing though, about, is that, yeah, that's, that's hilarious. The funny thing is always brought up in almost every vegan person, and some they just say to embrace it, you know? Yeah, well, well what's funny is that there's jokes about it. It's so common in the culture where people are like, oh yeah, vegan farts. I mean, you could, it's just, there's like memes on it and it's, it's funny, right? I mean, it was, but it's a sign of something. It's healthy. Right. But really, that's what people say, but it's a sign that, hey, something's not, you're not supposed to be doing this. You know, I had, I remember when I was doing bananas and oats, I would just blend up bananas and oats and water and drink that down the amount of gas that I would get every single day, it was at a point where I started getting frustrated by it. But I didn't put two and two together like, hey, well, you know, this, something's not digesting. That's one of the points when I was just pooping out purely that and I was, you know, was eating so clean. Now, the third one for me that is the most, I guess, endearing for me because it's my brain, you know, and sometimes I feel like, and it's not that I'm stupid or anything like that, or but my focus over time has really degenerated in a way and it really upsets me because even trying to string together a, a sentence full of words I've noticed this decline in myself with that and just in my daily life I tried to almost make it something more sophisticated but I think what it is is brain fog I just that's the only word that I can think that really encapsulates what I was experiencing uh, but I got used to it and I started normalizing it. it's almost like I adapted to my misery and I, no way it could have been my, my diet, right? No way, because this is a healthy, healthy healthy diet. This is a diet everyone should be eating, you know, plant-based. Um, now, in my last, just in this week alone from eating meat, um, and heart particularly, because I'm a big fan of heart right now, for the first time, and it gives me like the chills even thinking about it, that I finally had a day where I'm not feeling that odd, fogginess that that quite like okay i'm kind of listening to you but i'm not totally listening to you i'm kind of seeing behind you in a way you know and so when i think about myself and i think about my family i think about my wife we just had newborn kids and two months ago three months ago if you asked me would you ever eat meat again i would have told you straight in the eyes nope i won't i would have i was i wanted to raise my kids vegan and i didn't understand how crazy of an idea that was and did you watch my video today i did actually i did and um i think it could even go a step further because when and i'm you sorry talk for those about, of you that don't know what i'm talking about i made a video titled vegans kill babies so it, when you think about um the fact that my wife lost her period i mean if that we kept doing plant the whole raw thing we wouldn't even have the kids that we have today because really it's almost like um I thought about this. It's your her body was starving so much, right? Whether even though we didn't quite realize it, uh, that it's not even going to try to reproduce. Her it, her body already knows that. Hey, if I try to create these uh, offspring, it's not going to be successful. So it's almost like a birth control, you know. It's in terms of not having babies, you know, or the idea of killing babies. Um, so for any man who's trying to raise a family. Obviously, we're all in a position to try to find, okay, what am I going to supply my family with? Well, I I feel a lot more confident now where I can say, okay, I'm getting my own chickens. I know that much. And when I do eat meat, I strictly only eat the meat from the butcher that they have the grass-fed label on it. 
because I still understand the vegan ideologies of things. Um, and it's something that I still, you know, to a degree where obviously it's, it's, it's simple. Why would you have to add ex additional pain to a creature if you don't need to, right? Of so course. in the, uh, yeah. but just before we go into the, the grass fed meat thing, uh, you know, that brain fog thing, that's unfortunate, man. Some people go their whole lives like that. They really do. Mm -hmm. uh, and the B vitamins especially are very important for neurological function. And you bringing up the example of, you know, your wife not losing her, peri losing her period, that's a perfect example of the woman's body saying there's not enough calories in nature to sustain a child. But mm -hmm. the only way we would have ever gotten those calories in the first place in nature in that amount is from animal foods. I mean, you know, there are plenty of examples. Uh, just watch my live stream yesterday, guys, in indigenous groups procuring certain high-nutrient foods for nursing women. Uh, so, yeah. yeah, I just wanted to tie back on those points before we went further. But you were saying, uh, you know, yeah. you grass-fed beef because of the right. treatment of the animal? Right. And so, I mean, even in the context of being vegan, right, I still have the understanding of trying to minimize the amount of harm that I commit to a creature. Now, in my context, I'm not doing it for pleasure. I'm not doing it because, um, you know, I just want to go out to Burger King. I'm doing it because it's something that I need to do in order to satiate myself. And at, at a point, I feel like an obligate. And I, I, I won't say we're maybe carnivore. I don't know if that's going to come off in a certain way to somebody, but a, a, an obligate consumer of animal products in some way, right? Because out of my entire family history, there has never been a point where someone went, you know, we're going to um, negate all animal products. Um, and for me to try to be the first one to do this, and I'm feeling a detriment from it, um, it pins me into a corner, and I have and I have to make a decision. And I think there's a lot of other people who are in my same position, and they're at this point where they have to make a decision, or else they might be at their own demise. Uh, this ties in a lot to uh, what you sent me in the email earlier. Uh, vegans cause unnecessary harm that they won't justify for an animal. How can we justify behavior for animals? Uh, did you want to explain that to them? So, um, without getting too in depth into it, because I, the ethical side of veganism is a very long topic. But how would a, a vegan right go from that point of veganism to this point of eating raw meat? You know, and how, how do you how 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 do I understand that within myself? Um, now, what it really came down to me was a necessity. And people can say that, uh, you know, the World, the World Health Organization said that uh, a vegan diet is suitable for all stages of life, including infancy to elderly, right? Well, what exactly do they mean? I, I, wish, I wish they had actually told us what a suitable diet, vegan diet was. I wish they just spelled it out. Because for me, it put me in a position where I go, okay, well, the science studies are saying one thing. But when I look around, I'm seeing something else. When I look at myself, I'm seeing something else. So how do I rationalize this idea of ethics versus me surviving, right? When I look around, I go, okay, well, the science studies say one thing. Okay, let me look at the, the top tier vegans, right? The, the people who are advocating this the most. Let me look at how they look over long term, right? And I look at them and I go, I don't want to look like that. I don't believe that that is the level of health that I want to have. And it's not to try to take shots at them, but it's for me and my family and my own personal well-being. I go, I, if I could eat a plant-based diet without having anything to do with animals, well, then obviously I would do that. It's, it would be a simple decision, but I can't. I don't believe that a plant-based diet is something that is healthful for me for the rest of my life. You know, one interesting thing that I was just thinking of was, I mean, I mean, of course, uh, this wasn't it, but like the vegans and how they look, it's scarily true how there are literally no ve long term vegans that look good for their age. Mm -hmm. Maybe they look good because they work out or they're in shape, but facially and skin wise, there's no denying their age. Right. Uh, the thing about, you know, vegans getting optimal calories from nutrition, I remember Chris Cresser saying there's like bivalve vegans where mm. they only eat, you know, the oysters and the shellfish because yep. they're not sentient. But right. people don't realize that they literally, uh, and I believe in the fat of the land by the Yarmer Stephenson and about an Arctic explorer. And one part of that book, he was re the reason he initially went out to the Arctic 
and looked at Inuit diets and stuff was because he was looking at their skulls and the skulls were so perfectly physically developed in these Eskimos and these Inuit people who were eating predominantly animal products but what was interesting was those skulls were almost identical to Florida coastal Indians that were eating just shellfish mm. so it's safe to say that those non-sentient shellfish are just as nutrient dense as you uh, slice an open little bull peep or what is it um I'm, I'm so bad oh, that's a lamb I think yeah, 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 lamb, whatever, yeah. same thing, who cares, all right, <laughs> you, you guys get the idea. Yeah, yeah. You know, what are the three little pigs, you know, slice open number one, number two, number three, it's, it, that, it, the oysters are just as good. You go to right. Randazzo's on uh, Arthur Avenue, you go down to Mott Street, get some baked clams, delicious. All right, I'm, I'll stop messing around. Uh, well, it, so, well, and I, I think what you're getting at with that too is like, how can you find an ethical way to consume meat, right? And I think there's a lot of vegans who think that the, idea of veganism is anti-meat and really veganism is not anti-meat I f in fact i think a lot of meat eaters think that veganism is anti-meat but really veganism is anti unnecessary harm which to produce meat so let's say in a scenario right um there's roadkill well vegans could eat roadkill because it's not, not that, the world earlier right right not that that's going to happen but i'm just saying in the, the the idea of the ethics of okay is it the meat eating meat that's wrong is that or or is, is it the harm that's caused the animals you know or what which then leads me into just because something's not vegan does not mean that it's unethical you know so if i have my own chickens and i know this vegan arguments i i, I know the the uh counterpoints of these but if i have my own chickens and i go okay you know i'm gonna have them lay some eggs and the ones that they don't bother with i'm gonna eat those eggs i as an observer, I see no evidence whatsoever of harm, right? Now, if I eat the egg, is that being unethical? Okay, well, maybe somebody will say yes, because it's not vegan. And so I, th and this is the part where I never understood when people said veganism is a cult. Um, and it would trigger me, because I'm like, that's not, it's not a cult. If anything, eating animals is a cult. You know how, you're the one doing that. But what people are getting at is that people will get that vegans will get so tied up in this label of I need to be vegan, even if it's to my own detriment, even if I don't totally agree with that. Honey, do you really disagree with honey? Well, it's not vegan, so uh, I need to be on script. I need to be logically consistent to the point of my own demise. And that's where I finally it clicked to me because, OK, that's what they mean by cult. I'm trying to be logically consistent to the point of my own demise. Um, but but doesn't that get tricky when you say, well, if you could eat roadkill on the side of the road because it was killed accidentally, is that the idea? What, but what about ethically killed grass-fed beef or what about oysters who don't have, you know, nervous systems? Like this gets very foggy, doesn't it? Yeah, and I mean when it comes to like the, the vegan – if you ever get in a vegan debate with somebody, they, they won't go to that point not because they don't necessarily – they may not know the answer or not but because they'll try to handle the most obvious cases first, which usually stops there anyways. Um, now, you know, Everyone eats grain-fed beef, factory farm stuff. That's what it is, really. Right. Um, but to answer your question, in terms of like, okay, eating um, bivalves, right? Well, I think some people are erring on the side of caution because it has some sort of a nervous system ganglia in it or something oh, like that. Oh, not right? sure. Right, and so they they say, well, you know, if 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 anything, err on the side of caution, because like know. they respond to stimulus, but we don't know if it's just a, a biological response to harm or if they're actually being harmed, right? Yeah, I mean, because there is a difference between intelligence and sentience, yeah. you know. Um, but you know, on on the topic of the chickens, you said earlier, uh, you know, to have healthy chickens, you know, a lot of farmers have they have ma they breed maggots, they breed various bugs and worms and i can't remember the other worm they breed but uh sometimes like i i would go down to the new fulton fish market in the bronx and uh get some like fish chum fish meal to feed to the chickens and they go crazy for that you know the chickens the ducks they love the bugs they love the fish so uh you know i i guess that ties in with also i guess a pet dog you know if you have to right, feed yep. your pets yep. uh if you have to feed your pets meat and you have to feed your chickens meat to get eggs uh, you know, how does that tie in? Because you're and essentially then, just buying meat. Right, right, right. And so in that case, a vegan who owns a cat, for instance, it's very difficult to have a vegan cat. Then you wouldn't be vegan anymore. 
you just, it just, it's, it's just the way it's going to go. So, I mean, like, for a while, and not necessarily for any – well, there was a specific purpose, but I gave my dog the dog, right, and it's a vegan dog food. And that's – I for his specific purpose because he had some allergies, and that's what I, I resulted to. But for a lot of people, they would say, um, well, if you have a dog and you feed your dog meat, uh, you're not vegan anymore. So it's like – this paradigm of where, okay, well, you need to be consistent in every single aspect of your life or else you're not in the vegan club anymore, you know? And you, when it comes to the internet, you know how people are in comment sections. If you don't go with what they're saying, you get pitched for it. Um, and people are different on the internet than they are in real life. And that's just the reality. If you meet vegans in real life... I'm a lot shorter. <laughs> I'm 5'3", so if I look tall right now, don't, you know, don't be impressed. <laughs> um... And that's because my parents are short. Uh, so if you if you meet vegans in real life, you probably, they're just everyday normal people. Uh, everything we see on the internet gives off this. There's a, an idea of the preachy vegan and stuff. But really, in real life, people are just chill people. And you eat what you eat. They eat what they eat. They will, they'll disagree with it, but whatever, you know. Yeah, I mean, I think we, uh, we touched on a lot of things, man. We touched on the, uh, you know, we briefly summed up. You know, we're both sentient and we should be respectful for each other. But, you know, there's a point where you're harming yourself and you're malnourishing yourself. And, mm -hmm. and that's where it gets really foggy. And it's just, uh, I mean, I don't really want to go more into the ethical stuff because of this video. But, uh, I mean, and you've been carnivore for, I mean, just a week and you've already seen drastic improvements yeah. in your brain fog. You know, we can easily explain the, uh, what was it, the the fogginess, the the saliva differences, as well as the cavities. I mean, you know, yeah. Wesson Price's book on the, you know, that's what he focused on. You know, he was a dentist. He literally focused on dental cavities. But, uh, yeah. you know, to just, you know, we talked about, you know, I think a variety of different things, you know, to kind of just almost like, uh, you know, start opening the can a little bit and let you guys finish opening it to kind of go do your own research and uh, just explore the various topics. Yeah, and I, I think one thing I want, I want to uh, finish off with really quick is that, mm -hmm. um, you know, I went and I got my blood test done just before eating meat, and I got like a whole printout, everything, testosterone, etc. And if you're vegan, go get your blood tested because I look very healthy. I've never been sick a day in my life. I'm, I have a very lean body. I'm athletic. But when I looked at my test, I have some things that are not within the right, in the proper range. And if not with all this entire conversation of just me asking myself, I would have went to a point where I could have injured myself. And now, if anything, if you're going to eat a plant-based diet, make sure you are watching your nutrients um, and be truthful to yourself. If you get to a point where you start feeling that you are degrading, come up with a solution and don't just blindly say, well, you know, I'm doing it for the animals because really you need to be there for your family. You need to be there for your kids. And so um, one misnomer, I believe, is that vegans will say, well, I can just get it from uh, processed supplements, you know, supplemented food. I've been eating uh, cashew milk, almond milk, etc. All of those things say B12, hemp milk, but my B12 is low, right? Um, my D3, my D, I am a bus driver. I'm in the, at least in the daylight all day, right? And so I'm at least, my hands are exposed, right? Because we have t-shirts on, my face is exposed, my arms are exposed. As being a sunshine vitamin, we're an average person, and I'm in the sun more than most people be. Um, you will not, it is, for me, I did not get an adequate amount of D just from being in the sun. Now, granted, I live in Seattle, so that's a factor, you know? But um, at least just being out in the daylight, uh, it's something that people should pay attention to. So don't hurt yourself. Yeah, for let's, let's touch on this. So, you know, a lot of vegans will say that, oh, well, the general population is usually deficient in these vitamins mm. too. And we would agree, but v the, the thing is, these people are just following standard American diets and then they have some little deficiency. You guys are following vegan diets and literally supplementing and trying to get these vitamins and you have more severe deficiencies than they do. So not only are they not even trying to get it, you know, it's it's like the ultimate hypocritical thing to say. Yeah. And on the note of B12, obviously animal form versus plant form, it just doesn't digest in the body. It's as simple as that. And for things like iron, uh, vitamin D3, all of these things 
it's not just it's like calcium you, you don't just eat calcium and it goes into your bones you need vitamin d3 mm -hmm. your body signals i believe the hormones called calcigiol to absorb calcium in the kidneys and then that remineralizes the bones it's the same thing with vitamin d3 you need cholesterol in the diet you need vitamin a to heal the skin after the vitamin d3 is absorbed it's not just and this ties back to the paper value thing man you can't just take a D3 supplement and expect your vitamin D levels to go up. I've spoken with past vegans and past standard American dieters that took vitamin D3 for months and their levels didn't go up because they mm -hmm. just didn't have the other fat soluble vitamins. So I think mm -hmm. vitamin synergy is definitely something to note here. And hey, maybe if you took, maybe by some weird, crazy hypothetical scenario, if we change your diet to like all coconut and all avocados and uh, a, a ton of vitamin D3 supplements and vitamin K2 supplements, you know, you would have been a walking laboratory, but maybe we would have seen some interesting results. But that's that's modern science. That's laboratory stuff. And e even if it was possible to get, you know, there's always vitamins that are impossible to get on a vegan diet. B12, mm -hmm. and vitamin A, and retinoic acid. Uh, everything right. else, it's questionable whether we can get it. Uh, Omega-3s with high amounts of algae supplements, they're definitely toxic. But, uh, you know, regardless of, of how much we look into those supplements and various forms, there's always things we cannot get, regardless of how advanced science is. Yeah, and I, I think from the vegan mindset, we hear a lot of the same sentences a lot, and what has been normalized is supplements, right? And supplements are supposed to supplement something you're lacking, you know? And I, 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 fall, I fell for it too. I go, well, you know, it's okay to take supplements because uh, the meat eaters have to take supplements too. But it's like, well, you know, there's a lot of context in that sentence because why do they have to take supplements? Is it because their diet is inherently lacking in this nutrient? No, that's a whole totally different, you know, a whole totally different problem. Well, you can just take a pill and solve the issue. You know, oh, oh I was watching um, a video earlier and he said, oh, it's not a big deal. All I need to do is just take a spray every day. And it's like, well, no, there's something we, we shouldn't normalize that. There's, we should look at that and say, um, medicine. It is medicine, right? It's like I'm taking a supplement for a reason. Why? Is it because it's just normal? And I go, oh, oh well, I can just fix it. Pop the pill. I, I ignore the fact that my diet doesn't have a deep, you know. People think babies getting bone cancer is normal, you know? It's, mm -hmm. you know, at what point, uh, I think, what was I going to say in regards to the supplements? Uh, you were saying it's, you're normalizing supplements. Right, N normalizing. And I, I think that in some degree, now I, if you need it, you need it, right? But don't set yourself up to need it. Don't purposefully seek out the one that goes, well, this diet doesn't have any D in it, or uh, I'm gonna have a hard time getting iodine. I don't, you know, and there's a point where people will say the script, but in their personal life, they won't really practice it. They'll go, well, you can get natto iodine easily, you know? And then ask them, well, when's the last time you had natto? Uh, never, you know? If no, you never, it tastes gross. Usually, right. Usually, people ask vegans, "Where do you get your protein from?" But there's a lot of other nutrients that they can say, "Where do you get your X from?" And if that person does not know like that, it's a problem. And I'm not saying that to pick on vegans. I'm not saying that to beat you up. I'm saying that you have to pay attention to what your nutrient count is because it. You can't just willy nilly go. I'm going to eat 10, 20 bananas a day. Um, and call it good because you're not going to make it. And if you are truthfully wanting to be there in order to support the animals, you have to take care of yourself or else you're going to fall apart. And I guarantee you're going to say this isn't working for me anymore. So if you want it to work for as long as it can work for you, you have to pay attention. And for me, at this point, I've I've come to a conclusion that the way to have a true, truthfully nourishing diet um, is taking part again with uh, animal organs and et cetera, et cetera. And not for taste value, but purely for the, the health aspect of it. Were, were you ever on bodybuilding.com, you know, the saying, uh, lift heavy and take a multi? Oh, Have you ever heard that? It's, it's like yeah. a big joke, bro science. Just uh -huh. lift heavy and take a multi, bro. Uh, yeah. it's, it's, so, it's so silly. That's what that was reminding me of. But uh, I think I mentioned this in that video I made earlier, vegans kill babies is, you know, Vegans speak a lot about a diet being nutrient dense. They always speak about getting protein. They always speak about these things. But when you ask them to step up to the plate, they don't even swing, you know? They they can't explain where they're getting I, I remember when I when I was doing the critique video on Simnet Nutrition, the recent one that I'm gonna link you guys in the description, 
I remember he was on chronometer and he was saying, oh, uh, my vitamin K is so high. And he literally had to highlight over vitamin K because he didn't know where he was getting it from. Mm, right. Not only did he not know where that. he was getting certain vitamins from, you know, even especially the zinc and the calcium, which are in the form of oxalates, which can't be absorbed by the body. It's just crazy about how ingrained the conventional wisdom that fruits and veggies are good for you and that they're nutritious and that they equal health. When we actually analyze things and start to question things and not take things for granted and, and ask people to explain things, that's where, you know, long story short, if you question things to the point of open-mindedness and objectiveness, you end up on a carnivore diet. That's really what happens. If not mm -hmm. a carnivore diet, some variation of high nutrient-dense animal foods diet with heirloom grains, indigenous foods. Yeah, and I think the thing too is that we listen to the studies and we go, well, that science said that, so that's the way it's going to be, right? And so we hear one study that says one thing, and then we hear another study that says the entire, you know, the entire opposite. But then when we think about, okay, meat causes cancer. Okay, well, what about meat causes cancer? Who are these people that, who were, what type of meat were these people eating? And I can't sit here and act like I'm a know-it-all whatsoever, um, but I'm under the impression that the people who they're studying are eating a burnt up meat, they're eating overly cooked meat, they're eating processed meat, and they're eating toxic meat versus just eating uh, oh. well, I'm sorry to interrupt, but not to go uh, too specifically into that. Did you, you saw my video on that or? Um, no, I don't, I, I'd have to think of the title for that one. So it's, I believe it's titled, Does Meat Cause Cancer? And then in parentheses, it's like uh, heterocyclic amines, heme iron, nitrosamine. So you know, I could explain each of those things briefly because you brought them up. Mm -hmm. The burn meat, the heterocyclic amines theory, uh, is that they took that form, that carcinogen that forms when the meat's burned, and they injected it into rats at like 10,000 times the normal amount. So that's out the window. Uh, for the heme iron thing, it's in the context of the studies done to show heme iron were actually done on... Like there was one study that vegan gains like me where they took iron sulfite and they spun it in a centrifuge, which was completely ridiculous. Uh, that that was completely out the window. I have a whole video explaining that. Dog shit study. Yeah, yeah. pretty much. Yeah. I kept saying it was dog shit because it's dog. And <laughs> on the Joe Rogan podcast with Joel Kahn and Chris Kresher the other day, uh, at the beginning, Chris Kresher said, you know, the relative risk of epidemiological nutritional studies is so low that there really aren't studies that show anything yet because in comparison to things like cigarettes and cancer, you know, the rates are not even close. Where those are 30 to 40 times, we're not even looking at one times. Mm. Uh, but So the heme iron, my theory on the heme iron was that heme iron consumed in the context of an inflammatory diet in processed meats can actually be damaging because the body can't absorb the iron. Uh, you need the other vitamins to absorb the iron. And on and nitroso compounds and nitrosamines and nitrate foods, uh, if you dry heat them, which is it's like a huge uh, drum cylinder, and I'll link the video for you guys. It's this huge drum cylinder, and the nitrates in the meat react with this type of heating method, and they form carcinogens and nitroso compounds. So the and nitrosamines, it gets really complicated. Like nitrates turn into nitrosamines and and nitroso compounds. Uh, I, I talk about specifics yeah. in that video, but the yeah. point is. This dry heating method actually does make the meat carcinogenic, but I think if you just took that meat and cooked it at home, that's different. Yeah, you know, I wish he. I, I've been following Vegan Gains for years. I, I've watched his videos. I was vegan before I even saw his videos, right? And he has a certain pattern, and I'm not talking bad about him, but I'm surprised he didn't make a response to your response video, and it almost made me wonder why not um because you talked about something very particular and i don't remember what it was called exactly but i think it was a risk factor um yeah relative risk relative risk and i wish he would have come back with a response on that so the problem with that podcast and that debate with him was i hadn't slept for four nights uh the topics we agreed to discuss i had some studies for them but then he just pretty much kind of he chose a topic that was loosely related to it that i wasn't really prepared to discuss and the problem is I was kind of nervous during the podcast and I didn't take the time to research it. But the week before, I watched the video by Dr. Darren Schmidt. Uh, big shout out to him. on, And his, the, his video is titled, How to Tell Junk Science. And he goes over reasons in this video, like four reasons, I believe, that the science is bad. It could be the method of data collection. It could be, uh, you know, if it's, what, what, what else was it? 
if if the dosage was wrong, but that's hard to tell. Like you don't know if the dosage is wrong unless you have experience in the field. It could be that there's a low relative risk, which means if the relative risk is below one, or well, a hundred percent. If it's between one and two, that means that it does not account for causative factors such as like other like confounding factors, you know, like lifestyle, gene uh, genetic past, uh, past dietary history, exercise. It doesn't account for those things, you know, healthy user bias. Those things are not accounted for in a relative risk below two. You know, we kind of have to see a relative risk between three and four, but the studies that he was linking me literally had relative risks like of 1.1, 1.2, and he's saying, oh, there's a 20% increase, but no, that's that's not what it means. It means that there's like a, a filter. The uh, Let me, I believe it's called the Bradford Standards. I'm not sure. Let me just look that up real quick. The Bradford region, to know determine actual concentration of a protein, uh, but uh, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm drawing a blank on this one, but there's a, uh, Chris Crusher mentions it in the Joel Kahn podcast. There's standards for epidemiological research that, that need to be done uh, in order for you to acknowledge the information. So, you know, what what we do at face value in the study needs to be interpreted uh, in a different way. And I think the thing is with some of these two is that, like me, I'm an audience member, right? I see the study and I draw my conclusion based off of what the person has regurgitated it to me, right? Because I'm like, oh, well, I'm just audience. I'm just absorbing this information. Um, more people don't get on and actually understand what is being, what is happening in the study. And we really are basing our lives off of what we absorb from YouTube because we're trying to understand the world and we're all trying to find like a better route to living ultimately. Um, so whether someone's eating a carnivore diet or a, or a vegan diet, a lot of the same interests uh, align. There's a lot of parallels. Um, now trying to find the specific path can be difficult. Um, and when we have those studies where, for instance, and this is nothing against vegan gains, but he posts a study, well, that convinces and I go, well, then I don't need to eat meat because this study said that, you know, I'm going to get die from cancer and get a heart attack and I'm safer to do this way. Um, which then, once a person can go, I once a person believes that he or she can eat a whole food plant-based diet for the rest of the life healthfully, then that's when a lot of people make the transition to ethics. Most people who get into veganism don't necessarily go into it because of the ethics. They go into it because they're looking for better health. Then once they check that block, then they move on to, well, if I can live like this without har harming animals, then, then why not? You know, which is, it's logical. I mean, that's a logical conclusion to make. But then when you get to the point of you're making the assumption that, yes, this is something I can do for the rest of my life. And for me, I have to stop there because I can't get to the next point if I can't even healthfully do something, you know, for a long, for the rest of my life. Well, and you feel like you were being misled initially from people that interpreted studies and you just took what they said. Right. Uh, but to, to go over that, I did find it's it's called the Bradford Hill Criteria. And uh, I'm just going to read the abstract of this study. Uh, it's, it's how data integration has changed causal inference in molecular epidemiology. In 1965, Sir Austin Bradford Hill published nine viewpoints to help determine if observed epidemiological associations are causal. And I'll link this study for you guys. I don't want to go too much into this, but, uh, you know, th there's various reasons uh, it doesn't say, I'm not sure if it says relative risk here, but, you know, there's just various reasons in the Bradford Hill criteria that, uh, you know, it pretty much just requires an epidemiological study to be above a relative risk of like two or three, which we just don't see in these studies. So, uh, you know, I don't want to get too much into that stuff. That's really, uh, you know, very far from what most people I think are interested in. Uh, I think the main point to touch on there is, you know, always take everything with a grain of salt, never take anything at face value. Right. Except for what I Right. Think. <laughs> uh, you know, I, in all truth, you know, I, I always tell people to to take what I say with a grain of salt. But I feel like I filter information in a very honest and objective way. Uh, I, I try to I take pride in my uh, how genuine I am and uh, how I, I try not to push an agenda, uh, so to speak. Right. That's just something I've always tried to focus on. 
And I, and I feel like just me as someone who is transitioning, I try to keep as honest and as pure because I don't want to mislead someone. And I, you can be an influence just by existing, you know, and I don't want to influence somebody to go down the wrong wor- wrong, wrong wor- road by uh, misspeaking or trying to hide the truth. And so, like, even my my blood test, I want to post it so people can just say, hey, yeah, this is what your blood tests were, you know, um, the whole thing, except, except for my address. So at the end of the day, it's something that I am, I, it's a transition that I'm happy I've made. Um, I, I still keep in mind a lot of the, the uh, vegan values that I had in, in a sense of I'm not doing this because I want to hurt animals. I'm not doing this because I'm a, a, a person who likes to see animals get killed or, or I don't get off on that type of thing. And the reality is unless it takes a very particular sick person to want to harm animals, you know, just for the sake of harming animals. But there's a whole total different context when you need to be alive. And even when people will ask, well, would you ever kill a cow yourself? Well, not if I don't have to, but <laughs> right. But if I was in a position where I really had to, even if it was a dog, right? I mean, when you're hungry and you're a starving, you know, starving creature, you'll go to whatever length. Um, or even if you're a starving because you're a malnourished creature, you know, uh, even in the, in the modern context, you'll you'll go to lengths that become more practical because you go, well, I need to be alive and I need to live healthy and I need my family to live healthy. So um, I guess just to to wrap up what I was, my my ideas is that. I don't want to come off to vegans as um, me trying to beat you up or anything like that because I think a few of you may be in the position that I was in and not like this is um, a, a counseling session, but there's other people out there who feel the same way you feel where you aren't totally on board. You don't, you know, you want to feel better. You might be having an experience. Um, and if you choose to seek out animal products to make yourself feel better, it's not something that you need to feel bad about and the idea that you're trying to be a cruel or harsh person to animals because you're not. And at the end of the day, you have to take care of your own body and your own health. That's very well said. And I think anyone who's going to be negative or cruel, or I think cruel is a very good word to describe the persona of someone who would say anything negatively or Try to put words in your mouth that, you know, no one likes killing animals. No one, you know, there are some very sadistic and psychopathic people and sociopathic people out there that do enjoy doing those things. But the way vegans try to frame it, like everyone does it like that or everyone does it for mouth pleasure, things like that, it's just a very cruel and negative mindset that if someone's in that mindset, you shouldn't even associate yourself with them, let alone uh, worry about what they have to say. But uh, what what you said also just as a message to vegans in general to be very open minded and and to consider your health first. Yeah, um, because like I said earlier, if even within if if your if your health is gonna lack, if you're gonna fail on your health aspect, it's gonna be very hard to um, continue the the argument for morality um, as a as a individual who's who's supporting it, right? Because you're not gonna feel good. Um, if you can, you know, do what you're doing. If you're living on a vegan diet and you're happy and healthy right now, um, just be careful. Be pay attention and don't ignore the signs and try not to get wrapped up in what people call the dogma or just the the mental trap of being able to escape it because it is really hard and it's actually kind of saddening for the first time going or just even trying to think through it again. And but you're not the only one who's out there and uh, there's other people who who know how you feel. And it is challenging, but at the other end, when you have your own health again, it's it's good. So why did you think, in particular, you were able to kind of escape veganism, so to speak? What what about your character, do you think, <laughs> was it that... Uh... I think because I'm not afraid to be wrong all the time, and it is uncomfortable to be wrong. It's uncomfortable to be wrong, and it sucks, um, but this shouldn't be about being a right versus wrong thing. It should be about finding a truth, you know? And maybe a truth is true at one point in time where, hey, yeah, this vegan diet's helping me right now. But at some point, maybe too much good at some point, you know, you, you could have too much water, for instance. You know, at there could be a context where this plant-based diet is good for this specific you reason. can't have too many Norwegian girls. <laughs> My wife's from Sweden, so... Uh, I'm, I'm close. I'm close. I'm close. That's what I meant. That's what I meant. 
So, I mean, yeah. Um, so, yeah, being able to challenge myself, whoops, being able to challenge myself and ask myself the question, be open to it. Because really that feeling of being triggered, that pissed off, that annoyed, that, dude, that dude just ate raw meat at a, um, at a veg fest. How, how dare he do something like that? And then they go, well, you know, people called the cops on him, you know? And, I, and you think, like, well, vegans protest stuff all the time. So, you know, but within the vegan mind, there's something else going on. And not that they're crazy. Yeah, that's, that, that is a contradiction. Yeah, and, and not, not that they're crazy, but it's just that their fundamentals are so ingrained within um, saving the animals that they, again, will follow the, log the logical consistent to the part of their own demise. And that's where I don't want to go. I'm not the type. When I observe myself, I know the science studies say one thing, right? And then the vegan leaders say another thing. But when I step back and I take an observation of those individuals, I take an observation of myself and my experiences, I'm not going to stop. I'm not going to sit here and wait to become another statistic in a sense of what really the majority of um, vegans end up because how many like how many multiple generations of vegans are there? Well, I don't know. Maybe this will be the first. And if you want to put if this person, if you want to put your kids and have them be the first multiple generation vegans, I'm just saying there's a risk to that. Um, and just be careful. I'm not going to tell you how to raise your kids. Uh, it's just you know, pay attention yeah, to that, it. that is a very touchy subject for a lot of people. And I was even nervous talking about the facial development of a child in the, in the last video. I didn't want it because I've heard people, I've had people lash back at me and say, oh, they're perfectly normal. They're perfectly healthy. But this kind of ties back to your blood work where, you know, let, let's say hypothetically what happens, you know, you had low B12, you had low yeah. B3, yeah. you know, you felt like shit, you had brain fog. Let's say you get some new blood work in a couple months. Uh, everything's amazing. All the numbers are great. Your D3 is up. Your B12 is up. You feel amazing like you've never felt in your life. You look better. And then you, then people say, oh, no, his cholesterol went up. Oh, no, he's going right. to die. You know, it's, it, conventional wisdom will always rear its head. And knowledge and understanding and, and those things will always overcome conventional wisdom. It's just very difficult to do it with – and – you know, culture, modern culture, what people believe, what's ingrained in people's thoughts since they were young is so difficult to overcome in general that the power of convention is an understatement. And to understand how powerful it is is very difficult for most people to do. Even I struggle with various aspects of my life. You know, maybe you still struggle with it in various aspects of diet, as does everyone. It's just so, so difficult, you know, from the you know the Eskimos – smoke tobacco since they were kids mm -hmm. they always they never they always smoke tobacco they refuse to go on arctic expeditions without tobacco you know it's some things are so ingrained in culture that you just that's just how it is yeah. unfortunately and i think sometimes sickness is normalized in culture as well in that same way to where it's just normal it's just like and so well, like i, I mean have... we could talk about how you know people think wearing glasses is normal people mm -hmm. think wearing braces is normal getting Cancer is normal. Thirty percent. What is it? What crazy percentage of people get cancer now? People think these things are normal, but if we look just back fifty, seventy-five years ago, people were popping out what ten, fifteen kids. Right. Like it was nobody's business. You know, people had, didn't braces, glasses. It's just so obvious. But uh, you know, we're we're at an hour and twenty now, and I think we've touched on so many excellent topics. Uh, I think we've been really fluent and everything's been really interesting so far. Yeah. Uh, did you want to touch on anything else? Uh, I think the last thing I would say is that just on what you're saying right there, although you disagree with uh, or someone could have disagreed with the other side, you know, someone, as an opposition, I should find value in the other person's position because really at the end of the day, we're all looking for health, you know, just like what you're describing right now, where at some point we could do these things before we didn't have certain cancer rates, right? And as a, a people, as a, you know, human beings, we're suffering at this point. Um, and there's experiences that we're undergoing that were not so prevalent before. Um, and so even if someone eats primarily meat and you don't like that, well, that person is doing something that could open up an something that you never knew was even possible before. If someone's eating all plants, right, and they find a way to do that, well, that's an education lesson for me. I can go, okay, so, you know, how exactly, we can actually do more working together than working against one another. Uh, and uh, the problem is, is that people become very one side or the other, rather than, well, look what we all have in common. We know that processed food is junk. 
for the most part. You know, Doritos is a no-go. It's not real food. You know, we're trying to find things that are going to sustain ourselves and our family. Um, and so, yeah, that's pretty much what I, I want to, I guess the last thing I would say. Um, and yeah, did you see the podcast with uh, Joe Rogan, Chris Quest, or Joel Kahn? I haven't watched that one, but what I think is funny is that both vegans and carnivore, like, uh, carnivores are unhappy with the outcome of that and both go, you know, you could have they could have done this better. I don't want to go into that too much, but I mean, the reason I brought that up was because at the end, both Chris Kresser and him agreed uh, a vegan diet is, and Whole Foods diet is better than the standard American diet yeah. if supplemented properly. But all right, that I, although I will agree a vegan diet with perfect supplementation probably is better than the standard American diet. No one does perfect supplementation on a vegan diet. You know, you'd literally be eating avocados and coconut all day for your fats, and then you'd be supplementing K2, various things that people don't supplement. You'd be eating natto every day. But I don't want to say, you know, I mean, I think uh, depending on your degree of intelligence, if you watch that video, you could tell whether it was staged or not. I'm not going to, I'm not, I'm not going to touch on that note, but. Uh, you know, if you if you know Chris Kresser and you know what he does and you know Chris Kresser's intelligence level, yeah. uh, it's very apparent that he, he kind of held back a little bit on this. I don't really want to talk about yeah, no, this stuff I, too much. I, and I think v, uh, Vegan Side is saying the same thing um, for each representative. Um, but I think the last thing I'd also say is that, uh, as I described earlier, is that really if anyone looked at me, they would not have ever known that I'm deficient in something. And so I was just going to show an example of one of my tests. I don't know how well this will show, but that's my D that they had. Yeah, I'll, um, I'll read it for them. Yeah, so I had so, to... Um, uh, can you actually just put that in... For, uh, so that says, your vitamin D is 10 nanograms per milliliter. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, and that's... I uh, And the lowest is 30. 30 is guys, guys, let me, let me talk about that. So... That's the lowest vitamin D3 level I've ever seen in my goddamn life. Maybe someone has lower, but it's scaled on 30 to 100. Yeah. 30 to 40 is like you haven't been in the sun in your life. 80 <clears throat> is like 80 is like 10 hours of sun a day. So that range is very stupid because you could be in the range and you could be a sun god or you could be a, a hermit. You know, that's why it's so misleading. But for his vitamin D to be 10 is absolutely absurd. And then absurd. here's my B12. Let me pull my. I'm not as familiar with those numbers, but. Okay, well, you could add. Let me see. So, vitamin B12, I'm at um, 210, and the lowest is 247. So, if you can look at that, I don't know how well that's showing up. Um, and it's really hard to comprehend because there's so many, you know, equations on there. But if I didn't look at that, your, your cholesterol is like borderline low too, you know. Oh, did you see yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, is that low? Okay. Yeah. And then I I have my testosterone on this one as well with the D3. I don't know if you looked at that one. I don't know really if that's low or high. Um, that's like above above the low end. So that's that's something that a lot of doctors wouldn't be too concerned about. But I mean, you could, honestly, if you went to enough HRT doctors, they'd probably try to get you up. But no, those yeah, I mean it's there's yeah, definitely it's severe nutritional deficiencies in almost everyone, let alone just vegans. Vegans, it just gets much more severe. And if anyone asks me, oh, how do you feel? I just said, well, what's funny is because I was commenting before and I was saying I have I've had no health issues on vegan diet. I've been saying that, and little did I know my you know numbers are what they are. So um, it's unfortunate, but hey, at least I caught it now and I didn't go another you know seven years. And think, or put the kids, and you know, put the kids through it, and then end up getting injured, because I would have yeah, felt I mean, very bad. You're, you're fortunate in a sense that you've had relatively few complications from a vegan diet. You know, I think farting, uh, low pH saliva, and the brain fog is definitely the least amount of complications you could get overall. Mm. I mean, there are people they call them cronies. You know, a lot of people that go vegan get Crohn's disease. I think acne plays a, a big role too in various vegan problems. I think uh, fatigue and general low energy levels. I think you are uh, a very unique example of a vegan diet. I, I really think you are that you were able to subsist on it for so long and yeah. have you know pretty severe. I mean, you know, some of your health problems back then. You know, cavities were abscesses. You know, the most painful things in the world back mm -hmm. before we had modern uh, dentistry. So. 
Uh, the severity of the symptoms is a little bit understated because of modern science but and modern medicine. But uh, So if anyone knows me uh, in real life by chance, as you probably know, the first thing about me was, oh, hey, yeah, Bevan, you know, he was a vegan. It becomes like your identity in a sense. Now, if I somehow influenced you or um, made you believe that I was – I mean, I always thought I was healthy, but um, I just don't want to have anyone be misled because it was at a point where people would come up to me. I would always wear my vegan T-shirt at the gym, and I look good, you know, and people would go, hey, you know, ask me questions, this and this, this. Oh, you know, I started eating a plant-based diet, and I thought about you, you know, and I mean, a part of my T-shirt activism idea was to normalize the idea, but now I'm like a regress. I'm like, crap, you know, I hope... How many people did I mislead? Or, uh, hey, my wife, you know, I'm sorry that I even encouraged, and I didn't really encourage me and, and influence you at all in that way. So, yeah, that's that's all I really have to say about it. I think that's, you know, everything on my mind. Um, I'll post a couple videos. I'll try to do a blood test again in the future. I, if I can even get them to give me testosterone again, that was enough hoops to jump through. Um, but I want to have... And I don't... Uh, I'm sorry. Oh, yeah, I just want to have a... a you know, an honest transparency. And I'm just another anecdotal, another anecdote, really, you know, where I'm just some person who did the vegan diet wrong. So I already know, you know, I did my hemp seed here. This is quinoa, hemp seed, natto, nori, kimchi, avocado, um, foods like that. Those things, in my mind, were very nutritious and very uh, nutrient-dense. Those were the most nutrient-dense foods I could find. Um uh, and I don't know, I did it wrong, and that's eating better than most people did on plant-based. I don't. Yeah, I mean, I mean, we could go into each of those individually, but I, I mean, I have plenty of videos that cover those things, and I think people generally are pretty blind to the bioavailability of omega-3 from from flax, uh, mm. availability of various carotenoids and vitamins from certain plant foods. I think that's something that requires a much bigger discussion, and the problem with that is, vegans will always bring up, oh, you can't prove I'm deficient. Dude, I can't even get carnivores to eat organ meats, let alone convince the general population that these fat soluble vitamins are important for health. So that that discussion in and itself is much much larger, and uh, you know I don't think anyone should feel bad for you know past decisions they made based off of their present knowledge at the time. I don't think that's something that that we should ever worry about. Uh, but uh, I would definitely like to wrap this up because yep. you know we're just going to keep bringing up things that we could talk about. I'm sure we yeah, could yeah, go yeah. for three, four hours if we wanted to. But uh, I did want to ask, uh, did you want, um, I mean, maybe, you know, you could probably just comment on the video and I'll pin your, I'll pin your comment so everyone can go to your channel and watch your video. Uh, did you want to do that? Okay, yeah, yeah, we can do that. That makes a lot of sense. Uh, did you, well, you know, did you want them to reach out to you like on Instagram or Twitter or anything? Uh, I don't, maybe I, email? I try to minimize my social media. It's an addiction that I'm not interested in carrying Good on. idea. Okay. It's a, so yeah, Facebook, I have a Facebook, but I try to minimize that. So what's your name on YouTube? Um, Banana Bandana. All right. So if you guys want to speak to Devin on YouTube, he's going to comment on the video. I'm going to pin the comment. You can go comment on his videos and talk to them. Thank you guys who have tuned in and watched this. I think this turned out really well. Uh, let, let me know what do you guys think. I think we had a really nice conversation. Uh, a lot of back and forth. Some, some very, very good information was presented on various points that I think will educate people. And that's why I like doing videos like this. It's longer. Some people might not listen to the whole thing. But it covers literally 10 to 20 video topics that I'd have to do individually. And even when I do bring up topics, I can't sit here and explain everything every time. So that's definitely one important aspect of it but if you guys would like to support me please just share the video uh i have been doing you know, if you guys are on the carnivore diet if you guys are interested in fitness routines looking like a greek statue <laughs> then please reach out to me via my email frank at gmail.com i will put it in the description uh but outside of that let's say uh let's say goodbye to everyone all right let's get that last makeup check in Oh, we have to do. It. What oh. do you mean? We, we you don't do. You don't do two makeup checks, man. <laughs> hey, why? Well, I, 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 you, I you could have put one in. I could have edited one in. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, if we cut the clip. Uh -oh. All right. We'll see. But uh, let's say bye to everyone. Bye. Thanks.